everyone. Today we're going to look at a PLC programming example of a sorting station. And what you'll see is I'll be using factory IO to um, communicate to my Bricks PLC. Um, and it's going to be communicating Modbus TCP uh, Ethernet. So we're going to be t uh, simulating um, a sorting station and we're going to be using shift registers within that sorting station. Now, what we'll do is use the five steps to PLC program development. And the first step is to define the task. So our task, if we look up here, is if we're in auto um, and we hit the start button, what will happen is we will start conveying uh, product down this conveyor belt in behind. And we will pick up a visual uh, color sensor, which will detect the color of the product coming down the conveyor belt. We will then um, sort it into either the first one here, the second, or the third slot. Now the first slot here is for base units, which have the color um, of one or four. The second one here is um, two or three, which is actually a blue color. Or on the last one has to be five or six, which is a green color. So that's the where we're going to actually put them. So what happens is they come along and they will come down to the chute and then disappear here. So that's our system. What you'll see is we also have three counters. So as the um, unit or the sorter gets energized, it will count one for that sorting count. So counter one here is my bases, my blue, and then my green. I have my start and I have my reset. My reset just resets everything itself. So that is defining the task. The second step in our is to find the inputs and outputs. So if we um, go back to our factory I.O. and we'll look at the drivers, you will see that I have here are my inputs here, which is uh, coil zero to coil five, which represents that uh, at exit, start, stop, my emergency stop, my auto manual, and my vision sensor, which goes into holding register zero, which translates to MH uh, R1 in our case. And then we have our inputs here, which is our um, our actual outputs from our PLC. And we have our entry conveyor, our stop blade, our exit conveyor, our sort turner belts for the three. Then we have a start, start light, reset light, stop light. And then we have our three counters on holding registers one, two, and three, which correspond to um, MH or uh, MHR two, three, and four, respectively. So that is the define of our inputs and outputs. The next is develop our logic. So if we look back at our logic, which is right here, what you'll see is we start off with a start and we use our um, our latching uh, circuit. So we go through normally closed. We go through um, emergency stop, which are again normally closed wired. And it has to be an auto. It'll start, put the start light on. And that start light, as long as we don't have any jam ups of our, of our product on our conveyor, then it will start. And if the start light is on, the stop is off, and vice versa. The next part of the uh, system is our conveyors. So as soon as you do the start, what will happen is our entry conveyor, our exit conveyor, and all of the belt uh, sorter conveyors will then turn on. So as long as we're on, it starts. Now the next part is actually shifting the shift registers. So what we do is we have three shift registers, each one representing three of the conveyor belts. So we have a section. So from um, in our first register, uh, V0 to V19 represents the first shoot that we see. So what will happen is um, if the color sensor, which is MHR1, detects a 1 or a 4, it will put a some data onto our shift register. Then what we do is we use our start signal, 
or our start light, which means that everything's running. And instead of picking up the actual conveyor belt movement like we normally would, we're actually using a, um, a pulse timer, um, a system bit pulse timer, 100 milliseconds, that actually pulses to tell the movement of our conveyor belt. So that's what you'll see there. And then we have our reset, which as long as it's not started, we can hit the reset button and it resets the position of our conveyor. Then what we do is we actually track, so when the conveyor belt's moving, how much time does it take before I turn that first turn sensor and turn it on so that it will actually activate. We do the same thing with our sort tracker number two. And in this case here, it has to be greater than or equal to 2 or less than or equal to 3. It will provide data to our, our shift register, which is from V20 to V29. Again, we use the system pulse bit flag to actually uh, track uh, what's happening. So the, all three of these shoots all operate off the same pulse bit flags. Then we have V21. 15, which is the uh, second um, uh, registered word in our shift register, and the 15th bit that actually, when that comes on, it actually turns on our, our sorter number two, which then diverts that product over. Then we have number three, which has to be um, our color sensor, has to be greater than or equal to five, so either five or six, it will turn that on, which we know what's going to be a green color. Again, we then throw that into the shift register, and as you see, now our output is actually from uh, V33 and the seventh bit. So as we go along the conveyor belt, you see that we need further and further distances before we actually do the reject or the um, sorting. The next part of our program is actually our counters. So as the sorter turns or, or is energized, then we increment our counters. So there's our first one, second, and third sorter. Then we have our reset light. So if we have a product jam, you'll see that our reset light actually turns on and starts flashing. Or if we just hit the reset button, our reset light will turn on. We then have our reset counters and those counters uh, reset or move zero into the output value. And that's only happened when it's not an auto. Then we have our product jam. So uh, the exit sensor, if it doesn't see it for more than five seconds, this timer will time up, which then will start our product jam sequence right here, which flashes our reset light as well as it stops our latching circuit that we had previously. So that is our development of our program. The next thing to do is to actually test the program itself. So if we call up our factory I.O. backup again, and we'll go into the, the unit, we'll reset, make sure everything's so fine, and stop, and then we can hit start. When we hit start, nothing happens because we're actually in, uh, in manual mode. So let's switch that to auto mode, hit start again. And sure enough, everything starts up. Let's look at our sensor. There's our sensor picking up our, our corresponding uh, information here. And we have uh, the different uh, uh, products coming along. You'll see here, our base units go in the first one. Our, the um, blue one, which go in the second one. Again, base units in the first. There's blue one second. The green one should be in the third. Now these products are being randomly placed on the conveyor belt for us. You see them sliding down and disappearing. Uh, 
On my left side here, we can see the bits shifting in our shift register to tell which direction we're actually putting them in. So as they come down the bear belt, we energize that output to fire off where to direct that product on the conveyor. So testing the conveyor, uh, testing the program is vital to the actual development of the program itself. And you see the, uh, in this particular case, we've used shift registers to track along that conveyor system and reject or uh, sort those um, product out according to what it's actually seeing on that sensor. All right, all the links and documentation can be found on our website at accautomation.ca. If you like this video and like to see more, there are three ways in which you can help us out. Give us a thumbs up so other people can find this information just as you have. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel at the end of the video. You can also go to accautomation.ca and subscribe to our website. When you do, notification will be given to you every time we publish new content to the site. You'll also get two free ebooks on numbering systems and robust data logging. And the third thing to do to help us out is to tell a friend or colleague about the site. Alright, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.